guys, welcome to this week's edition of the Coffin Hero Show, where we now take you through all the single issues out this week. There are, of course, other releases out this week beyond what's here, uh, which may be included in your pull list, for example. But there are one or two things that there were slight issues with this week, just so you know. So, first of all, uh, we don't have any copies of Punisher this week, uh, Punisher number four. We should have had 20 copies of cover A and one cover B, and instead we're sent 20 cover Bs and one cover A, as you do. So obviously we always guarantee cover A first print, um, so we basically just sent the uh, cover B's back and cover A should arrive with us next week. Also Radiant Black's another one because we were supposed to be sent issue 28.5, but we were sent issue 28. So again, I'm holding these back until we have both copies in, in stock, you know, the Radiant Black's been a little confusing with how it's been done, to be honest. It's been pretty cool, but it has been a little bit up and down with how it's shifted and so forth. Uh, all pull lists are done, of course, as I say, so other than those two titles, everything is 100% good to go this week. So, just take you through what's going on to the racks, as I say. So, first of all, we kick things off with DC, and we have Detective Comics, literally DC. Uh, we're up now as far as 1082. We're starting to enter the end game of Randy's run on the title. I believe it's 1089, he'll be stepping away, but this arc's been absolutely fantastic. So, it has bringing in Dr. Hurt and uh, having Bruce sort of find himself in the desert, been really, really good stuff. Next up is the Flash, or as far as issue five from the new run, or sorry, issue six from the new run. Cy Spurrier continuing on, and Mike Diodato Jr. on art. We have a Green Arrow hitting issue nine this week, so Joshua Williamson, Sean Isaac on art, continuing on that. Harley Quinn is issue thirty-seven this week, so uh, you have your main story, but you also have some backup stories as well from Erica Henderson. After that, we move on to, this was actually out last week, which was John uh, Constantine Hellblazer, Dead in America, number two. But we were shorted some of our copies, so uh, the replacement copies came this week, so it will be on the racks. We had enough last week for pull lists, but just not any for the racks. Next up is Penguin. Uh, we're hitting issue seven now. Tom King, Stevan Subic, absolute brilliant series. Brilliant issue as well. Uh, one of the very best, I think, from DC at the moment. Next up is uh, Titans number eight. Again, was out last week. Again, we were short of copies. Again, replacements have come this week. So issue eight now for Tom Taylor and Steven Segovia on art. We move on then to Marvel. And we kick things off with Amazing Spider-Man issue 44. So Zeb Wells, John Romita Jr. Uh, this is the last issue of the Gang War storyline. And uh, if you're on all the Gang War stuff, there is one more issue, I believe, of Daredevil um, Gang War to finish off. But the main series in Amazing Spider-Man concludes this week. Uh, Avengers Twilight, we managed to get some of the second printing number ones in this week. Issue 3 was due this week as well, again it's in everybody's pull list. We just got a couple of latecomers to it, so we have none for the racks. But again, some have been ordered and will be here for next week. Uh, next up we have Dead X-Men, issue 2. So uh, we're continuing on with this mini-series for the uh, X-Men who were apparently dead uh, during the fall of Krakoa, but uh, are actually their own team. Giant Size Fantastic Four is next, so a one-shot title here. Uh, Fabian Nicaza on writing duties here. Uh, and again, part of the recent run of Marvel Giant Sized issues. Immortal Thor is next up, so Al Ewan and Martin Coccolo continuing on with uh, The God of Thunder. And um, we're as far as issue seven, glorious Alex Ross covers as ever. Miles Morales Spider-Man reaches number 17, so I believe this will be a jumping on point. Um, the Gang War stuff is to the side now, and um, we'll be reconnecting uh, with Miles on his own. So Cody Ziglar, Federico Vincentini continuing on that. Uh, a recent new series that started was Resurrection of Magneto, so we're as far as issue 2 now. Uh, so for this one, I believe it is Al Ewing as well on writing duties. A brand new number one this week for you Spider fans, which is Spider-Punk Arms Race. So brand new number one, I think it's either a four or five issue mini-series. Cody Ziegler right on uh, this one and Justin Mason on art. Uh, some facsimiles as well this week. So first of all, we've got Uncanny X-Men, uh, issue 268. So it's the first time that we have Black Widow, Captain America, Wolverine team up. Uh, gorgeous Jim Lee cover. Uh, this has, I think, been released because recently a new series started called Wolverine Mad Report Nights, which again reunites these three into a new adventure. Uh, what If Venom out this week. This is going to be a five issue mini series with What If Venom, had a, the symbiote had a bonded with different um, heroes. So, of course, you have Loki, you have Doctor Strange, Moon Knight, you have Wolverine. This one confused us for a long time, but I cannot confirm it is She Hulk because that's what this issue is. Uh, Super Tooth War continues on Wolverine this week with issue 44. So, Benjamin Percy continues to write one of the best Wolverine stories in years. 
And last on the Marvel side of things is Women of Marvel, which is a one shot dealing with the female characters. I believe that there is a little bit of a hint as to where the X universe is going in this as well, so it might be a unique one for you X fans. We move along from there and on to the indie side of things. So this was a series that came to my attention a little while ago. A few people had asked and they're starting to do sort of new printings for each issue. And it's called Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees. So I believe this is the third printing of it. But again, a lot of people have just been asking after it. Described as great psychological horror, which is not the impression you get from the cover. Uh, but again, very critically lauded at the moment and in demand. New issue of Conan this week. So Conan the Barbarian number eight. Uh, so Jim up continuing on here. Doug Braithwaite on art. Uh, Crashdown was a new title coming from Comic Tom Garcia. It had some Ben Templesmith art. Uh, we sold out the number ones, number two this week. Uh, again, some issues that we wrote. This is the Deviant number four, James in the fourth, and Joshua Hickson continuing on that. Uh, we have not got the nasty because this is my copy. This should not be in here. Uh, but the nasty is a part of the series. We'll be getting the trades in certainly when it comes to it. But John Lee's all to do with the video nasties of the 80s and 90s. Uh, a Sonic title that hits number two this week, which is Find the Hunter. Uh, Sonic stuff always proven popular. We've actually ordered a, a rake of new Sonic the Hedgehog stuff uh, to come in over the next week or so. So we'll be topping that Sonic the Hedgehog back catalog box up a little bit. New issue of Undiscovered Country this week, hitting issue 28 for uh, Scott Snyder, Charles Soule, and Giuseppe Coley's adventure. World Tree number eight is this week also. So James Tenney in the fourth. Uh, and then we've got uh, Fernando Blanco, of course. Although, interestingly, in this one, he is just referred to as Tinian. I love Tinian for Go figure, only just noticed that. And then, just to finish off with, I'll take you through some of the variants in this week. So, Green Arrow number nine has a, a lovely Black uh, History Month variant cover uh, done by Nicholas Draper Eve. So, a brand new one there. We have Francesco Francavia, one of my favorite artists, doing a variant for Detective Comics. So for 1082, Francesco Francavia. As well as that, we have the Sebastian Fumara 1 to 25 variant cover for Detective Comics as well. Uh, I've mentioned foil. Um, again, Secret Wars, uh, the facsimiles, number two. Again, we had some late people coming on to it. Pull lists will always be serviced first, and then if there's copies left, it goes in the racks. But all the pull lists have been taken care of, but no spare copies. But we do have the foil variant covers in as well, if you want to go that route. I've mentioned that beautiful Jim Lee cover from Canny X-Men 268. We also have a foil variant cover for that as well. And one last foil to finish off, which is Spider-Punk. This one done by Ian Bertram, which is rather nice as well. Speaking of Spider-Punk, we do also have the Window Shades variant, which is done by Todd Nowak. Uh, we finish off with World Tree number 8, the 1 to 10 uh, retailer exclusive variant. And that is Sebastian Fiumara, the same artist that did the, uh, the Detective Punk one there as well. So yeah, that's everything going on the racks for this new comic book day, this coming Wednesday. Uh, as I say, all pull lists are done, ready for a collection. Uh, aside from Punisher and Radiant Black, everything is all good to go, but again, they should be with us this week as well. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this as ever, hope it proved useful, and I look forward to seeing you in store soon. Take it easy.